The Olympics, usually a byword for sporting excellence and national pride, have become controversial in Japan. Their 2020 Games were delayed until this summer due to the pandemic, and polling suggests that as many as 83% of Japanese people want the Games cancelled, despite safety measures such as banning spectators and the mandatory quarantining of athletes. The pressure seems insurmountable, but the 2021 Olympics will open on the 23rd of July. In this video, I explain how Japan's epidemic threatened the Games and why they're still going ahead. Initially, Japan seemed to be handling the pandemic well. The BBC recently reported that despite having a large elderly population and densely populated urban centres, they avoided high death rates. Now, uh, the reasons touted for this were the fitness of Japanese citizens and high compliance with safety measures, but unfortunately this approach was on borrowed time. And the reason for this is that instead of fighting the pandemic with mask mandates and enforced lockdowns is that the Japanese had a far more voluntary approach. The way it worked was the previous Prime Minister Abe Shinzo would go to someone like, you know, the head of a school board and say, hey bro, I've got this nasty virus going around, would you mind maybe closing the schools? No. And Abe would just take it like a punk. I am being glib but only really slightly because Japan's constitution doesn't have a provision for a state of emergency in a pandemic and in fact forced quarantine like they used to do with people with leprosy was ruled unconstitutional in 2001 so without this provision they could ask people to go into lockdown but they couldn't actually enforce it with punishments if they didn't comply. As such the government basically relied on shaming businesses which didn't shut and in some cases this backfired according to the fashion blog who reported that some pachinko parlours, which were gambling machine shops, stayed open despite the request for their closure. In fact, some parlours which ignored the request and whose names were publicised by the Osaka governor received more customers than usual as other parlours were closed. In a lot of cases, lockdown just wasn't an option as businesses didn't have the capacity to set up their workers from home. The Liberal Democratic Party attempted to amend the constitution so they could actually enforce these rules, but this was at a point when the pandemic was going quite well for Japan and therefore the plan just seemed really authoritarian and it received a lot of pushback from opposition parties and from the LDP's coalition partners and therefore it just fizzled out. Then between July and December, Abe and his successor Suga sponsored subsidised travel around Japan in a scheme called Go To Travel, which was kind of similar to Britain's Eat Out to Help Out scheme and has been heavily criticised for spreading coronavirus. The vaccination campaign has also been poor. Comparing Japan and Britain, Britain started their campaign on the 13th of December and five months later they'd fully vaccinated 29% of the country and given at least one jab to 54.2%. Japan's vaccination campaign started two months later and five months after they fully vaccinated only 16.9% of their population and given one jab to only 286 One reason for this is that Japan has really high levels of vaccine scepticism and insisted that they run their own tests on a Pfizer vaccine to ensure it was safe, hence why they're so late. According to Asahi Shimbun, Japan's mistrust of vaccine is decades old, partly because side effects have often been played up. In the 1990s, the government scrapped mandatory inoculations after a court ruling held it responsible for side effects linked to several vaccines. What's more, the country actually does have enough vaccines for its entire population, but instead of in Britain, where they have like, you know, a volunteer army giving out vaccines, culturally the Japanese only really trust doctors to do it in general, um, and therefore it's a lot slower. So what did this mean for the Olympics? Well, initially on the 3rd of March 2020, the IOC announced that the Games would be going ahead, but this was at a point where they only had about 92,000 cases worldwide. By the 24th of March, there were over 510,000 and the Games were delayed. As I've mentioned before, these Games will have a lot of restrictions, including a total ban on spectators, which according to Inside the Games will cost the Japanese economy about $3 billion, but really this is small change when you compare it to the cost of the games themselves which is around 15 billion dollars. Now uh, if you look at it from the Japanese government's perspective they've already spent all of this money on arenas, employees, safety provisions and things like that so saying they're going to lose money is the wrong way to look at it because they've already spent it so if we think about it from their point of view they may as well push on. And if we believe Mr. Suga, Japan doesn't really have a choice. The Prime Minister says that only the International Olympics Committee can cancel the game, but they won't do this as they have $1 billion of broadcasting contracts and a lot of money tied up in insurance companies who they need to keep on their side. 
Changing their dates again would mean they'd get less money from advertisers as people get less interested as time goes on. In this light, it's quite clear that the IOC makes a profit, but Japan doesn't. So why does Japan even want to hold the games? The Olympics are always presented as an investment, but I don't think it's a monetary one. Looking at the number of tourists in Brazil and the UK, the last two hosts saw the numbers go up in Olympic years, but the trends lead upwards anyway. And the only real spike was in Brazil in 2014 when they held the World World Cup, not the Olympics. As such, The Economist reports that the investment is likely more of a political one, with Japan showing off to regional rivals like China and with Suga showing his party to feel good nationalism that conservative parties crave. Pushing on also proves Japan, who've hosted two Winter Games and one Summer one before, are still a reliable partner for the IOC. However, this is politically costly as the games are not at all popular and all of the blame is being placed on the Suga administration. So while athletes are lifting gold medals in Tokyo, Suga's administration could well be left behind the starting line. Hello, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it all the way to the end, then I assume this content is your cup of tea. So if you could just give me a like and hit subscribe, that would be much appreciated. And as you can see on screen, there's a few more video recommendations for you. Um, so you can just sort of go down the rabbit hole, you know, just stay on my channel, give me loads of views, why not?